Hi, my name is Althea. I'm here from My Girl Voice and My Friendly Cities. And I'm here to chat to Las Makuba from Coventry Asylum and Refugee Action Group about the meals that she served to the refugees in Coventry. I um, just want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, um, could you introduce yourself? Oh, good evening. Uh, my name is Last, Last Mafuba, and I am from a, an organization called Inini, Inini Initiative. Uh, we deliver a culturally specific mental health service to BME communities, and we work mostly with migrants, asylum seekers, and refugees. Um, could you tell us about the means you're making from asylum seekers and refugees during the coronavirus lockdown? Yeah, uh, what it is, is I am part of CARAG. I, I sit in the CARAG committee, and there are homeless people within that group who use the night shelter. And when the mm -hmm. lockdown started, the council offered them accommodation, but unfortunately the accommodation they are in, they can't make meals, they can't access the home, or they, they can't make meals in those accommodations. So I offered to come in and set up a community kitchen in my own kitchen at home. And so okay. then those are the meals I'm doing. Why is it important to make these meals during the lockdown? We all need food. Food is a basic yeah. need. We all need uh, meals. And um, for the people that I'm doing the meals for, these are guys with no recourse to public funds. Uh, obviously, these guys uh, have got other issues going on for them. And to have those issues going and to not have food, to, to, to have the anxiety of the corona, it, it's it's mm. a lot. It's a lot to take in. I'm doing uh, the best that I can to make sure the the uh, meals are nutritious. To make sure they taste nice, because yeah. I know most probably that meal is the one comforting thing these people are going to get throughout yes. the the lockdown. So I try and make it as nice as possible. Yeah, that's the best you can do. Just, mm. That's what once it's coming from the heart, it's gonna taste nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it, I, it, it, it's true. If you're cooking and you're hungry cooking, it don't taste nice. Yeah, I pour my heart into it. Yes, yes. yes. How are most migrants you work with coping with the self isolation and the vital services during the lockdown? Obviously, they have to stay indoors, not necessarily indoors indoors but you know what that the, um, you know what the yeah. restrictions say yeah so that you should I, stay stay in and stay safe yeah yeah stay in stay safe and because they they got like a flatlet each so you yeah. are in your flat yeah they are getting by uh it's not a choice they have but they are getting by they are okay accommodation wise and meals wise obviously i am just making them one meal per day which means they have that one meal but they still have the anxiety of not knowing what will happen to them once the restrictions are uplifted to be able to stay in their accommodation are they are they going to be kicked out so that's the anxiety that's added to the lockdown anxiety what are some of the other positive work you and Karak does with the refugees and migrants in the West Midlands? I would say we, we try and make their stay as comfortable as possible. This, we mostly focus on mental health. We do have within the Karak group uh, people who've been detained under the Mental Health Act yeah. and released back into homelessness. We come together as a group and try to ensure we get accommodation for them. We encourage them to continue to engage with mental health services. You know how difficult it is to be on medication and to be on the streets. So usually people just disengage. So we, 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 we make it a point that they are comfortable 
get accommodated. We speak, we advocate for them to the council. We support them, go for their reviews. We just make sure they have the basic need. Their basic needs are attended to. How can others help, like people like myself and others? How can we help? What can we do to help? We actually are fundraising at the moment yes. uh, to support those in isolation. Like to do the meals, we need to buy the ingredients. Yes. Uh, we, we as Karag have a meeting once a week. We meet once a week, but you will find that most of our members cannot afford the data, the Wi-Fi to join mm. these meetings. And I am sure you are quite aware that at presently there's, there has been a lot of changes. It could be immigration changes, mm. could be welfare benefits changes. There are a lot of forms that needs filling in. People need to get that information. But because they don't have uh, the data or Wi-Fi, they can't join in the meetings. They don't get to have this information, which is vital. You know immigration issues. If you just miss something, that's I it. Know. You're out. So yeah. if people can, can, if we can afford to buy data for people, that would be nice. We, as Inini, also have a Zoom meeting every Tuesday afternoon so that we, we go through people, mental health issues, or just to make sure they're comfortable. But those who really need that information, that service, cannot afford to come yeah. to the meetings. Yeah. Um, one last question. Is there like a GoFundMe page or there's any way that could signpost them to where they could get like um, free internet um, things like that? But with the lockdown now, I know it's difficult to go to um, socialize and go to play libraries and places like that. But is there any other place that can signpost them to, to get you? Even, even to food banks, because sometimes food banks help with, with um, might be able to help with um, internet if they have something important to do like signing forms and um, deadlines for the home office and things like that we we do work with food banks like uh in coventry where we are uh we have formed a black community covid19 response task force yes where we are signing signposting people to different organizations and as Inini and Karag as well, we sit on the multi-agents migrant uh, committee. And yeah. we, I remember we had a multi-agents meeting about two weeks ago, and almost everyone is talking about the lack of data. So even okay. the food banks do not have, they, can, they are struggling as well to, to connect with people because of the data. Thank you so much for um, speaking to me today. It's lovely talking to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.